I often see on the internet two pretty common questions around feeding your betta fish, and that is how often should I feed my betta as well as how much should I feed my betta fish. In this video, we will tackle both of those questions, so stay tuned. What is going on everyone? My name is Harry from Farm Aquatics. Here you'll get tips, reviews, research-based best practices for all of you casual keepers out there. Anyone who's owned a beta in the past know that as long as there's food in front of that beta, they will continuously keep eating. So it's really important to know the answer to these two questions. To make sure the video doesn't go too long, I will do a separate video on what specifically you should be feeding your beta, the types of foods, the kinds of foods, the ingredients in those foods. So stay tuned for that as well. Be sure to subscribe down below. Everyone has kind of their own way of doing things based off of whether it's their research as well as their past experience. So the things I'm going to be sharing today are based off of my personal experience, what's worked for me. Keep that in mind. So the video will be in three parts. First, I'll talk about what I personally do when I feed my betta fish. In the second section, we will go into the factors that you need to consider with regard to how often and how much you should feed your betta fish. In the third section, I'll bring it all together and kind of give you my recommendation on what you should do when it comes to feeding your betta fish. So first, what do I personally do when feeding my betta fish? So in terms of frequency and time of day that I feed, I'm pretty much consistent and I try to stay consistent so that they know when the food is coming to them. I feed once a day every morning as soon as the light turns on from my betta fish's tank. I actually feed my betta fish six times a week and I leave Sundays as a fasting day. Less work for me as well on the weekends, so there's that perk. I do around five to eight pellets per day and then I also do fluval bug bites here and there throughout the week. So now that you know my regimen, should you follow me to a T? And the real answer to that is no. Everyone has a different setup for their beta fish's tank. Everyone has a different beta. Everyone has different amounts of foods or types of foods that they're offering their beta fish. So whenever you see these blanket answers online, you really need to take that with a grain of salt because every situation is different. What's more important is really for you to kind of understand your beta fish's physiological baseline in terms of activity levels, weight, interest in terms of appetite. So that you could figure out the specific regimen for your beta fish. So taking that all into consideration, we'll move on to the second section on those specific factors that you need to consider when deciding how much and how often you should feed your beta fish. So I think there are going to be seven general factors that you should consider as you're deciding your feeding regimen for your beta fish. The first factor is your beta fish's activity level. Some can be pretty slow, pretty nonchalant. They like to stick to their favorite corner in that tank, whereas some beta fish are pretty active where they're constantly moving throughout the tank. They're zigzagging here and there. And of course, if you have an active betta fish, he or she is more likely to need more food compared to that betta fish that likes to relax and chill all the time. I would venture to guess, and again, this is more of a generalization, so take it with a grain of salt, that a lot of those short fin betta fish, such as placots, are more active compared to those long fin types of betas. Second factor that you need to consider is the general size of your betta fish. Kind of goes without saying, the bigger the betta fish at baseline, the more they probably need to eat. So I'm not talking about obese betta fish, but I'm talking more so like giant or king betta fish. A third factor that you need to consider is the temperature of your tank. I addressed this in the video prior, but the ideal tank temperature is around 78 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. So if there's ever a case for whatever reason why your tank is not at that ideal temperature, especially if you're in that lower range, colder than 78 degrees, then you're effectively decreasing the metabolism of your betta fish. With a slower metabolism means that they need less food because they can't digest it as easily or as quickly. So with this factor, you should be more concerned with bringing your temperature up to that ideal range as opposed to decreasing the amount of food that you're feeding your betta fish. If you're ever stuck in a situation, whether it's a failed heater, where your tank is really reaching those minimum temperatures where you can't really do anything about it, alter the feeding regimen as needed. The fourth factor is the size of the food that you're feeding your betta fish. So I think this is one of the issues that I see often online when people are asking about these feeding questions and people giving these blanket answers like, oh, I feed X amount of food twice per day, so you should do the same. The size of your betta fish's pellets may vary greatly from that of the next person. So you really can't take that feeding advice without knowing that specific information. Beta fish foods come in a plethora of different sizes, shapes, caloric densities. So keep that all in mind as you're doing your research. The fifth factor that I like to consider is the short-term impact on your beta fish's stomach. A good visual cue in my opinion to indicate whether a beta fish is full or not is that the stomach is slightly rounded but again not bloated. 
So there is a difference. If your betta fish is bloated, it's pretty obvious their stomach is busting at the seams. Whereas if a stomach is rounded, it's just slightly protruding where you could kind of make out the shape of it. You want to avoid making your fish bloated because that can lead to a number of different digestive problems. The sixth factor I would consider is the long-term impact of your betta fish's weight. So this is different from factor two where I talked about the general size of your betta fish. In factor six, I'm talking about the change over time of your betta fish's weight. So if you see your betta fish kind of getting a little thick or three C's instead of two, then you most likely want to cut down on the amount of food that you're feeding him or her. On the flip side of things, if you do see your betta fish losing weight over time, you want to increase the amount of food that you're feeding. So after that, you might be wondering, Harry, what's a good indicator of a healthy weight for your betta fish? That leads me to the seventh and final factor that you need to consider, and that is the prominence of your betta fish's swim bladder. So I'll put a diagram up here somewhere, and you'll see that this is the swim bladder. It's located near the tail end of your betta fish. I use this as a great visual cue to see if a betta fish is overweight or underweight. If you can make out where the swim bladder is on your betta fish, chances are your betta fish is underweight. A healthy betta fish should have a good amount of meat on the bones to make sure that the swim bladder isn't as prominent on the body. If it's more smooth on the tail end where you don't really see that swim bladder, then your betta fish is probably at a healthy weight. If you do see a swim bladder that's pretty prominent, up the amount of food that you're feeding your betta fish. If you don't really see a swim bladder near the tail end of your betta fish, then you could either decrease the amount of food that you're feeding or don't make any changes. Now let's move on to the third and final section where I discuss what I personally recommend you do to find out your betta fish's specific feeding regimen. Obviously everyone needs to start somewhere. Keeping in mind that betta fish can go one to two weeks without having to eat, I think it's always safer to err on the side of precaution and start off low and gradually increase the amount of food you're feeding. The last thing you want to do is overfeed your betta fish right from the start, figure out that you need to cut it back down and realize it's too late because you just created a whole bloated mess and your betta fish now has problems. I personally recommend that you start off with three to four pellets per day. And yes, I recommend you use pellets. I'll go more in depth in this on the next video on what you specifically should be feeding your beta. Right from the get-go, I think you should start off with pellets because there are a number of benefits when it comes to this form of fish food. The specific pellet that I recently started using and I highly recommend that you guys all start using is Northfin Beta Bits. Now, I'll go more in depth in that next video on why this hits all the check marks in terms of what you should be looking for when you're picking out a food for your betta fish. I will link this down in the description as well as the foodful bug bites. No pressure, but if you wanna support the channel, feel free to use those links. I recommend you start off with three to four pellets and then I would gradually increase one to two pellets per week. And as you're doing that, of course, take into consideration all those factors that I talked about in the previous section, especially those last three. I also do recommend that you fast your fish every seven to ten days like I do. I think it's generally agreed upon to fast your fish pretty regularly. And lastly, whether or not you want to feed your betta fish once a day or twice a day is totally up to you. I personally like once a day because at baseline, I don't need to feed my betta fish too much. But of course, if you see that your betta fish doesn't like eating too much in one sitting or the proportion sizes are too big for one sitting, then I would split it up into a morning feed and then a night feed. There are other videos out there that have a different methodology where they basically ask you to feed your betta fish to its maximum to see how much the betta fish can potentially eat and then cut it down based off of that information. I personally don't like that regimen but I mean to each their own. I just think it's kind of risky having to figure out your betta fish's capacity at that point. I like my approach personally because even though it is subjective, it is based off of visual cues and physiological cues and I think it's the safer way to go about things. Hopefully this was helpful. If it brought any value to you, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. It really does help out the channel. And of course, if you have any questions, be sure to comment down below. I try to the best of my ability to answer all the comments that come through my way. As always, the article around this video topic will be linked down in the description description when I get down to writing it. And guys, if you haven't already, be sure to follow me on Instagram. That will be linked down below as well at Farm Aquatics. Hope you guys have or had a happy holiday season. I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.